Hello everybody, my name is Jennifer Maker. Welcome back to The Great Maker Show and Tell. Today we are making a personalized subway art sign, which is a sign made with different types, colors, and sizes of fonts. But before we can do that, we need to talk about fonts, specifically how to install and use them on your computer and mobile devices so that you can use them in Cricut Design Space. Now, I'm going to bet that you already know what fonts are, but let's just do a refresher on them. Fonts are a set of displayable text characters in a specific style. When you type a word anywhere on your computer or mobile device, it calls upon whatever font you selected or was the default to display the letters, numbers, and other characters on your screen. So when we type on the canvas in Cricut Design Space, we can use that displayed text imagery for our own purposes in creating our cut files and our designs, right? Cricut Design Space already has a number of fonts installed for you to use. These are all the same fonts that came pre-installed on your computer or device, plus any fonts that you installed later, plus extra fonts provided by Cricut Design Space. So we can divide our fonts into two general categories, system fonts and Cricut fonts. System fonts are computer system-wide and not specific to your illustration software or any other one specific kind of software. Cricut fonts, on the other hand, are pre-installed by Cricut and can only be used in Cricut Design Space. So the first question most people have about fonts is, can I install new fonts? And yes, you can. You aren't limited by the fonts already on your computer. You can install more. Installation of fonts differs based on whether you're on a Mac or, a, or a Windows computer or using a mobile device, but the general principle is the same. You install the fonts on your computer or device, not from within Cricut Design Space. So in a nutshell, you would find the font um, online, and I'm going to tell you more about that in a little bit, download it, unzip it, and then locate that font file itself. It usually ends in .otf or .ttf. And now I am fortunate to have a Windows computer, a Mac computer, an iPad, and an iPhone all here in my craft room. So let's head on over to each one so I can show you exactly how to install a font and use it in Cricut Design Space. Then once we've done that, we're gonna create some fun subway art in Cricut Design Space, and I will show you how to cut it and apply it to a canvas just like this. So let's begin with a PC computer running Windows 10 and the Google Chrome browser, which I recommend in general. So first we need a font. So we're gonna start with the font that I made. Go to jennifermaker.com and click on libraries, and then scroll down until you get to the enter the free resource library link. Click on that. If you have the password already, which you can get for free by signing up for my newsletter, enter the password. If you don't, you just use the form that's right here on the page to request it. So once you're inside my library, scroll down and look for my font. If you have a problem finding my font, because there are a rather a lot of files in my free resource library, I recommend that you search for it. So on your Windows computer, press Control plus F at the same time, and a box will pop up in the upper right-hand corner of your screen. Usually it's where that is. Type in the word font and hit return and locate all of the instances of fonts on this page. So here's my Maker pen writing font. You click it and it downloads. And you can see in the lower left corner that it's downloading. If we click this little arrow, it's not. it'll tell us that it's still working on it. We can, um, if we wait, until it's done and then click it again, then choose open. And it'll open it up in your Windows File Manager. And sometimes it decompresses it for you and sometimes it doesn't. If it doesn't, it'll look more like this over here where it just says Maker Pen Writing Font. And when you hover over it, it says Compressed Zipped Folder. To open this, just double click it or right click it and select Decompress. One of the two will work. Once it's open, Double click the Maker Pen Running Font folder and double click it again to open it again. Now you want to double click this Maker Pen Writing file. It's an open type font file. And once you've clicked that, you will get an installation screen that looks just like this. Just click that install button up at the top 
and give it a moment to install and that's it. You can close this window. Your font is now installed. Congratulations. Now, let's, if you already have Cricut Design Space open, you need to reload it. Okay, you, you won't be able to see the font until you reload it. But once you have, let's go on in there and click New Project and click on Text. And we'll type a test word. Now, to change the font, you want to go up to the Font menu and type in the name of the font that you just installed. So in this case, Maker. And there it is. When you click it, it change your test text changes to the font that you installed. And that is it. That's all you have to do. Now let me show you how to install a font on a Mac using OS 10 and a, the Google Chrome browser, which again, I recommend. So we're going to need a font. We'll start with the one that I made. So go to jennifermaker.com and click on libraries. Scroll down and click on enter the free resource library and type in the password. If you don't have the password, just sign up for my newsletter and it gets sent to you for free. Once you're in the library, scroll down until you find the font. If you can't find it in the long list of free files I have, I recommend that you search the page for it. Go to the edit menu, choose find and click find. In the box that comes up, type font and click enter and you'll see the font highlighted on your screen. Just click on it and it downloads and this window in the lower left corner appears. When it's finished, click the little down arrow and choose show in finder. And once you've done that, you'll see it. It usually goes to your downloads folder. Let me zoom in on this so that you can see it better. So here's the zip archive. To open the zip archive, just double click it. It's that easy. Then double click the decompressed folder that we have right here. And here are two fonts. It's the .otf, that's the actual font. Double click the .otf file right here like this. And when you do that, font book opens for you. You see a window like this. Just click the install font button. And that's it, that's all you have to do. Now let's go head on over to Cricut Design Space. Remember, if you already had this open, you need to reload Cricut Design Space for your font to be installed, okay? So let's do some test text. Uh, click on text and type in the word test. And then go up to the font menu and search for maker, the name of the font. And there it is, so you click on it and that's it. You now have the Maker Pen Writing font installed and you can use this same process to install any other font on your Mac and use it in Cricut Design Space. All right, so let me show you how to install fonts on an iPad or iPhone running iOS 11 or higher. The process is the same regardless of whether it's an iPad or an iPhone. So first we need to go to the App Store. We need to get a free app called iFont. So once you're in the App Store, click on the search button down at the bottom and type in iFont, I-F-O-N-T, and search for it. Um, it'll probably be the first result you get, so click on the download um, icon. Wait, give it some time to download. It's not too big though. It was pretty quick for me. Click on open and it'll give you a little tutorial and stuff. Um, that's all you need to do for now with iFont. So now you, we need to go get a font and we're going to go get the one that I created. So go over to jennifermaker.com and click on libraries, scroll down and click enter the free resource library. And when the screen comes up, type in the password that I sent you an email. If you don't have a password, uh, sign up for my newsletter and I send it to you for free. Now locate the font in my list. If you cannot find the font, because there are too many free files in my library, which I think that there probably are too many at this point. It's a little hard to find things. Here's a tip. Go up to the bar at the top of your screen where the URL for your uh, the, for the web page is and delete everything that you see in that top bar. Just you can hit the backspace key, which is all I'm doing here. Type in font, and then down where it says on this page, tap find font. And it highlights for you on the screen, it makes it so much easier to find things. So click that and you'll get a screen that looks like this. Tap more, and then tap copy to iFont. Now you'll see it's opened the zip archive for you. So you can unselect about this font, but keep maker pen writing regular selected. That's your font. 
And once you do this, you'll be directed back to iThought. And over on the left, you'll see an option to install the Maker Pen Writing regular font. Tap the Install button. And then you'll be guided through a series of menus. So tap Allow, and then tap Install. And then you'll need to put in the passcode for your iPad or iPhone if you have one. Tap Install, and then tap Install again. And then tap Done. So you have to go through this process to install the font on your iPhone or iPad. So now we can go to Cricut Design Space. Now, if you already had it open, which you probably did, you have to restart it. Otherwise, your font will not be visible. So if you don't know how to restart an app, you just double tap your home button, right? So that's the big round button at the bottom of your phone or your iPad. Double tap it twice and you get a screen that looks like this. And find the Cricut Design Space window and swipe up with it. So by that, I mean you hold down with your finger and you move your finger up quickly to swipe it up and that basically removes it as an open application. It doesn't deinstall it or anything like that. So now when you go and open up Cricut Design Space again, it's restarting it from the very beginning. Okay? So you have to restart to see new fonts once you after you install them. So back in your restarted Cricut Design Space, click on text at the bottom and the insert font window comes up and you need to click on all because it defaults to Cricut. So click on the all tab at the top of that little box there and then type in the name of the font that you just installed. So we're going to type in maker and you can see it right there at the top. So just tap that and then put in some text so that we can see what it looks like. And there is our test. Make that nice and big. And there we go. We have installed a font in Cricut Design Space on the iPad and the iPhone. Now here is an awesome tip for you. If you'd like to use both your iPad and iPhone and your laptop and computer, whatever, you'd like to use all of them, just make sure that the same font is installed on all the devices you use. And then regardless of where you design or cut from, you know, you know that any saved projects that you created have that font. That's all you have to do, okay? All right, so now let me show you how to use these awesome fonts that you found and installed in a project. So we're going to make a subway art sign. So head on over to Cricut Design Space and click on New Project, then click Templates. So we're gonna use a template for this one. So just type in Canvas at the top there in the upper right and select Basic Canvas. So here is a basic canvas. It luckily defaults to a 12 by 12 cutting mat, which is exactly what I want because my canvas is 14 inches. If your canvas is a different size, you'll want to change the size. Also, I'm going to click in the upper left corner of my grid on my canvas. I'm going to click twice and it's going to remove my grid lines so that we can see the screen better and I just don't need those grid lines there right now. So it makes a nice clean canvas for me. All right, now it's time to put in text. So we're gonna click that text icon and I'm gonna start with the word maker. So I'm going to make a subway art sign themed around things that I really enjoy when it comes to being creative and making things, I, I suppose is really the theme here. So my, so my, my maker theme, I am just gonna make that text and Go up to the font menu and choose a font and I'm just going to go crazy. I'm going to pick a whole bunch of different fonts for different things. I'm starting with this couture font because I really, really like it. I got this font at dafont.com and it is free. So that's D-A-F-O-N-T.com. And I'm going to go ahead and make this text as wide as my canvas because it's going to be the primary word. It's going to be the big, the big, bold word. And then at this point, I'm just gonna start adding new words and changing the fonts to different things as I feel like. There's not really a rhyme and reason. You get to choose what you like, what what fonts you like, what words you like. Uh, you can choose the orientation and the size and the color and everything. It just needs to be pleasing to you Nobody else, just you, <laughs> unless you're making this for somebody else, then, you know, keep their aesthetic in mind. But 
Yeah, it's there's it's not you know I like the idea of having a big big word to sort of give you this is your general theme. So my general theme of this subway art canvas is going to be maker. But other than that, it's just going to be other words that I associate with this. And you don't have to even do it this way. You could just do it. You could do it with sayings or phrases or lyrics to a song, whatever text you would like to create, right? But the idea is that we're going to use different fonts and sizes and styles and just make something really interesting to look at. So it's not just plain text. It's really interesting text. People call this, also call this font art or typography art. And one thing, you know, that you'll want to keep in mind is that little, fragile, skinny, delicate fonts will be a lot harder to cut and a lot harder to see on your canvas. So generally speaking, you're going to want to choose big, bold, audacious fonts, ones that are good, you know, that have some substance to them so that when you cut them out and they're on your canvas, you can actually see them and not, they're not lost on the background. Also, of course, it's going to be a lot easier to weed your vinyl when your font is not teeny tiny. <laughs> and well, let's just talk about cursive fonts because I just, just did one and here's another one. You want to make sure that your letters are touching when you make a cursive font. So and you do that by um, selecting the, the text that you just made and then you click on letter space and you make it smaller until they're touching. Because when we write cursive, our letters touch, right? And it just looks better. So, I mean, of course, this is your person. You know, you can do what you want. You, you can totally do what you want. But as a font maker and as a uh, graphic designer for 35 years? Goodness, it's a long time. I don't know. Yeah, we're coming up on 40 years, actually. That's yeah, actually, I think it's 40 years this year. That's a long time. <laughs> Anyways, when it comes to a cursive font, they just look better when the letters are touching, right? And sometimes, especially in Cricut Design Space, it's hard to get the letters to touch just the way that you feel they ought to. And that's because Cricut Design Space doesn't really honor what's called kerning. So some letters, even though like you might type them in another program, would look beautiful. They don't always look so great in Cricut Design Space. So you may need to go up to uh, the advanced menu and ungroup to letters and then move each individual letter separately. So it's just right the way you want it. I didn't do that for this project because there was a lot of text and I was just trying to you know get this finished for you. But I have shown that in other tutorials Um but it's just advanced and you ungroup to letters and then you can see, then you can move each individual letter into place. Uh, do make sure that you have space in between all of your words so that when you start layering your vinyl, it's not so tight that it's really difficult and you accidentally have a lot of overlap, right? I mean, if you need overlap because that's what you want, that's fine. Just keep that, just keep in mind that it might be more difficult. And if you're off by even like a, you know, a millimeter, you know, it might not look quite the way that you intended. Having a little white space between your words, a little white space, because the idea is that this is a pretty dense bit of text, right? It's really art with text. Um, and it generally looks better when it's dense. But again, you can do whatever you want. I'm trying to fill in the white spaces with words and you know the what what font I choose makes a big difference, doesn't it? So some fonts are wider than others or taller. And so I'm just experimenting with finding a font that fits in the space that I want to use. And it takes a little while to find these fonts. Thankfully, Cricut Design Space shows us which each what what each of the fonts looks like. And of course, if that's not quite good enough for you, there are alternatives to this. So one of course is to print out all of your fonts into a binder. This is something that I did back in the 90s. <laughs> um, but since then, I've decided that that's a lot of paper and a lot of effort to print out every font. And so I use FontBook in on my Mac to see all of my fonts. But if another alternative to Fontbook, especially if you're not on the Mac, is to go to a website called wordmark.it, wordmark.it. And when you do that, you type in a word that you'd like, 
and it brings in all the fonts on your system and it displays it for you. So you can see exactly what that word looks like in the fonts that you currently have. So that's a really good resource to try. And something else that's cool is that some fonts have pictures in them, right? They're called glyph fonts or, or I don't know, dingbat fonts, right? And you can use these as cutting files as well. So here I've used one uh, that's of a little decorative icon thing and I put it in between crate and sole at the top of my subway art canvas. And I have this heart that's in my maker pen writing font that you could use. Although I think it's the fact that it's, it's, it's really the pen writing font is really ideal for pen writing, not for vinyl cutting. So I think I'm probably going to remove that. I'm not going to keep that on the canvas. I wanted to see what it looked like. But here's another little glyph font. And you just that's it. you just type it in there and place it where you want it to be. You know, finding the glyphs themselves is a little bit tricky because it's not always, you know, obvious where, um, you know, which letter creates which, which uh, picture. So to see these special glyph characters and figure out which letter to type to get them, on Windows 10, you can type map in the search box on the task bar and choose character map from the result. And then over on the Mac, you can just go to font book and you can choose to have it show you the repertoire of all of the characters in the font. And now I'm gonna save my project just in case I accidentally lose my internet access or anything. So I like this really, it looks really good the way it is. So that looks pretty good. So I'm gonna select everything and I'm gonna click attach. And if I do that, it keeps everything in the position that it's in, which is great if I want to, I want to keep it this way, but I want to make some changes. And there's a couple things that we need to do here. So I'm going to click cancel. So the first change I need to make is to weld my cursive letters together. Cause if I don't do that, then where, where the letters are touching, they will cut out there, right? So go through and select all of your cursive letters and weld all of those. You can keep the other ones unwelded, it's fine. But cursive letters need to be welded. I'd like to change the color of some of these fonts. I think I'm gonna use three different colors for my canvas. I have some really pretty foil adhesive vinyl that I'd like to use. And it's in sort of an aqua color and a reddish color and a dark gray, almost black color. So I'm gonna pick some words and change them to the aqua color. And then I'm gonna do the same thing with another set of words and change it to the red color. And those would be my three colors then, aqua, red, and black. And I've decided that heart is not gonna work, it's just too skinny. So we're gonna just replace this heart entirely with um, a basic shape that's here available right here in Cricut. So really easy to use. So let's just delete that. And then go over and click on shapes and choose the heart down there at the bottom. And we're gonna resize this. We're gonna, we're gonna change the color to match our red color and resize it and then put it into position just like that. So there is our completed design. This is our subway art design. Let's save this again. Always good to save as you go. We're going to click on color sync to make sure that we have all three colors, uh, just the three colors, no extra colors. So if we were to click make it right now, what would happen is that Cricut Design Space would separate our words out like this, which frankly, is not super helpful. Yes, you can do this and you could cut it out like this and it'll save on vinyl, but honestly, it'll be a big pain in the butt and you'll have to worry about placement and you'll have to worry about things being straight. I'm not gonna do it this way. I'm gonna do it differently and I recommend you do as well just to save yourself uh, you know, a little bit of a headache. We're gonna select all of the elements that are the same color and then we're going to attach them. So first we're gonna do all of the red and then go over and do attach. And then we're gonna do all of the blue. So just hold on your shift key as you select and click on each one. 
and then we attach it. And then we do the same thing for the black. Just make sure you get each black element, holding down that shift key as you click. And then click attach. And now each of the three colors are attached and when we click make it, everything is exactly where we want it to be. Super big deal here. <laughs> now, if we cut out these 12 by 12 sheets, everything is right where we need it. And so we're gonna be able to layer this so much easier than if we cut out each individual letter. So this is all we have to do at this point is there's no extra steps for cutting this out. You don't, do not have to mirror because this is adhesive vinyl. Um, you don't have, you don't want to move anything on your mats. So don't start moving things. Keep everything just where it is here. Click continue and select your Cricut. We're going to click browse all materials and I'm using that foil adhesive. And that's it. We cut it now. I need to show you a tip if you're going to use this foil adhesive as well. It is really stiff and it's it's rolled up like this and it does not want to lay flat at all. So what I've done is I've used a strong grip mat, a brand new strong grip mat, in fact, and I'm going to get it as straight as I can on this mat. It is very, very rolled up and very stiff. Let's smooth it all out. You want it to be nice and smooth without any bumps and wrinkles. And even though this mat is brand new and it's a strong grip, it still kind of is starting to pull away. So I'm going to use my painter's tape just on the very edges, just to keep that in the place. And so if you don't have a strong grip mat, just use whatever mat you have and use some tape. For the side here, you don't want your tape to wrap around the edge. I noticed that when I do that, it kind of get, will get gummed up under the wheels and can cause a jam. So instead, you know, use a uh, more narrow strip of tape so that it doesn't come, you know, to the edge of your mat. Okay, so I've cut out all three of my mats and it's time to weed. And now I have sped up this process considerably. Otherwise, we would be here for quite a while while I weeded this because yes, it took a while. This is a full 12 by 12 sheet. And some of these letters are finicky, especially that skinny believe down there. That was probably the worst one. And also this is foil adhesive. It's not, it's very stiff and it's harder to weed, but entirely possible with patience. You just uh, need to go slow. And I found that pulling it uh, perpendicular to the letter helped a lot. Um, also, you see me here cutting squares around the words with my knife. This is a great tip that I have for you. So when you do this, uh, you can then concentrate on just that one element to cut out and you don't have to worry about your vinyl sticking to everything, right? And of course, you can also set this up right in design space. You just put a right rectangle around the element that you want to do like this, but you can totally use your knife as well. Just you just when you cut it, you don't want to cut so deeply that it cuts your backing layer. And, and there we go. We put on our transfer tape onto one of the layers and then we're going to pull that off and it's a bit stubborn. So, <laughs> But there we have it off. So now we're going to take that same piece of transfer tape and put it on our next layer of vinyl that we've weeded. And we're going to do the same thing for the last one. So see how everything is right exactly where it's supposed to be without having to worry about it. And then we place it on our canvas. We want to make sure that's down really well. I'm using my brayer and my scraper. I'm doing it from the back. And then I flip it over and I carefully remove the transfer tape. Again, it's going to be a little bit fiddly because adhesive foil is very stiff. And it doesn't want to bend very well. But if you use this method that I'm, I'm showing here, uh, Greg taught me this because he used to work in a sign shop. But you take your transfer tape and you basically pull it all the way over so it's now you know flat against your canvas and you pull it across your canvas or whatever surface you're working on and so it's like it's like flat 
it actually helps get all of those, all your vinyl will come off easier this way. And it's also creating like a nice, smooth surface to work from if you have to like place things down as you go. So I just went across, you know, using my uh, weeding tool to keep little letters that wanted to pop off down and and when I was finished, I used my braying tool and my scraper tool to make sure that all of that vinyl was down nice and good and tight and smooth. And, <laughs> um, and there we go. This is the finished product. It really uh, was really quite simple to make. And it's going to look really nice on my wall in my craft room. There's one little mistake, and that's on the R here on Maker. It started to tear, and I didn't catch it in time, but whatever. I am not worrying at all about the R having a little rip in it. But if I were, it isn't difficult to just recut that R and then replace it there, right? We don't have to recut the whole thing. We just fix the one little bit if we wanted to. And that's it. That's how we use all of those awesome fonts that we've installed to create a beautiful subway art canvas and make a lovely typography artwork. So as you can see, using the right font for a project makes a big difference. Generally speaking, delicate and skinny fonts never seem to cut out very well. I favor big, bold, and audacious fonts for my cut projects. On the other hand, if I'm using my Cricut pen to write something, those skinny fonts always look better. So it's also important to weld any fonts with letters that touch one another unless you think that you might need to adjust those letters later on individually after you cut them out. And be sure that your cursive fonts are touching to the extent that you want them to by using letter spacing and then weld, right? So having the power to add and use fonts is such a big deal. You don't even have to make subway art to appreciate the power of fonts. Just try adding a name to your next project, set it in the font of your choice, and you'll see how powerful this is. You can personalize everything this way. All right, so tomorrow I'm gonna to show you how you can make perfect bows using paper. That's right. Don't forget to send in your project ideas at jennifermaker.com slash show and tell. And remember, if you can tell me what you want to make, I can show you how to make it. Until tomorrow. Mm -hmm.